بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين ما بعد continue reading from the statement of the author رحمه الله تعالى with regards to المرتبة الثانية الإيمان the issue of الإيمان and that which the author has mentioned it's very beneficial in the methodology that he has traversed upon in this way. And now he has defined Al-Iman in this manner. And he says, thaniya, The second stage and level of the deen, Al-Iman. Wa huwa bid'un wa sab'un shu'ba. And it is 70 some odd branches. A'laha qawlu la ilaha illallah. Its highest branch is the statement, La ilaha illallah wa danaha imatat wal adha an al-tariq. And its lowest branch is to remove some harm from the path. وَالْحَيَّاءُ شُعْبَةٌ مِنَ الْإِيمَانِ And the bashfulness, chastity, shyness, وَالْحَيَّاءُ It is a branch of faith. We see that what the author he has mentioned here, رحمه الله, and that his definition of al-Iman is actually the wording of a hadith and a prophetic narration from Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And it is the exact wording here. And, he, and, and the similar wordings as the author has mentioned in this definition has come on the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam even it has been reported in muttafiqun alayhi by Bukhari and Muslim this wording or one of the wordings excuse me that has come and he, with this meeting and it's known to the scholars of, had, of hadith as hadith as shu'ab the hadith of the branches of faith and then the author he says وَأَرْكَانُهُ sitta and the pillars of faith of iman are six, and he mentioned those six pillars of faith. Rahimahullah ta'ala. So this is, indicates that he had defined the issue of al-Iman with this narration that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam has mentioned, and inside this narration is a, a clear evidence and clarification of the reality of al-Iman, and that it is as has preceded statement and action and creed. Uh, as, the, as the Salaf they have mentioned, that iman qawlun wa amal, statement and action. And we have seen what is intended by that, the statement in action, the statement of the tongue and the statement of the heart, and the action of the body parts and the action or the actions of the body parts as well as the actions of the heart, as well as the actions of the heart. All of this is considered at iman. And we have seen the uh, evidences for this and he, from some of the narrations of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And we have seen that uh, very beneficial statement of Al-Imam Al-Sa'di Rahimahullah Ta'ala and to summarize again we, we mention that Iman it is the creed of the heart and this is the foundation of Al-Iman and the evidence for that is found in the Hadith of Jibreel and that has proceeded and likewise the actions are also from Iman and this is found in the Hadith of Ibn Abbas and the narration of the delegation of Abdul Qais. And they came to the Prophet وسلم, and he told them about Iman and he commanded them to establish the Shahada or to, to state the Shahada or Shahadatain and likewise to establish the prayer and the Zakat and the fast of Ramadan and to give the charity of the Khumus and the Wabudi. And that these actions, they are from Iman. And so we see that also from Iman that, or that foundation that is established in the heart, likewise the actions are as well considered from Iman. And then also we have seen from the Hadith of Abi Hurairah anhu the Hadith La yazni zani hina yazni wa mu'min that the, the one who fornicates he's not a believer while he's fornicating, meaning that the Iman it, de- it decreases at that time and it becomes uh, the Iman that is obligatory. And uh, therefore, what is understood from that, then in order to, in order for the iman to be complete. And the obligation of Iman to be fulfilled, one must leave off that which is prohibited. So therefore, not only performing the actions that are obligatory or the actions that are required or rep- recommended and encouraged, any of the actions of obedience, Naam, this is from Iman, but also leaving off the prohibitions and avoiding that which is disliked and staying away from the haram entirely. And leaving that off, this is also from an Iman. This was found in those three narrations. We continue now with the narration of Abi Hurairah radiyallahu anhu wal hadith hadith al-shu'ab hadith shu'ab al-iman the narration with regards to the branches of faith. So it's narrated in Bukhari and in Muslim that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said al-iman bid'un wa sab'un al-shu'ab 
فَأَفْضَرُهَا قَوْلُ لَا إِلَهَا إِلَّا اللَّهِ That at Iman, sincere and true Islamic faith, it is 70 some odd branches, and its most virtuous branch is the statement La ilaha illallah, wa dinaha imatat wal adha an al tariq, and its lowest branch is to remove some harm from the path, wal hayyau shu'batu min al iman, and, uh, and chastity, it is a branch from faith. It is a branch from faith. So we see in this narration the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he has clarified that all of these affairs are from Al-Iman. And this is a clear proof that Iman, just as the Salaf have mentioned, it is a statement on the tongue and an action of the body parts, and likewise it is a creed that is in the heart. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he clarified in this narration that Al-Iman is not one level and not one stage and not one degree. And not one degree. Rather, it's 70 some odd branches. Some of the ulama, they mentioned that this number is intended, and he actually 70 some odd branches, and they have tried to number them, and have mentioned any 70 or more uh, branches and, and, and issues that are considered or called iman in the text of the Quran and in the Sunnah. Others, they have mentioned what is intended by this 70 some odd branches, and in many, many aspects. Not, not, the number is not intended. But rather what is intended is any an abundance, any a lot, it kathra. Nam bid umma sabuna shuaba. At Iman faith, sincere Islamic faith, bid umma sabuna shuaba. Seventy some odd branches. Nam in any case he said Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in this narration and the wording, Fa Afdaruha in its most virtuous. In one wording by uh, Imam Ahmed, as is referred to in the text of the author, Rahimahullah Alaha, its highest branch. Also, it has come out of fa'uha, the same meaning, its highest branch, its most lofty branch. Nam, and is the statement, La ilaha illallah. Is the statement, La ilaha illallah. So here we see that the highest branch of faith is the statement, and this is a statement. And this, so this is clear evidence of the statement of the Salaf that Iman is qawlun. And because the highest branch is qawl, La ilaha illallah. Nam, qawlun wa amalun. وَاعْتِقَادِ نعم, A statement and action and creed and belief in the heart statement. But one must understand and realize that whenever this, this word القول and the words derived from القول يعني قال يقول قول قولا يعني يقولون or قول أو قولوا like this يعني قلتوا Whenever it's mentioned the word qawl and its derivatives in the in, in the in the Islamic texts and the in the Sharia or in the Susa Sharia, what is intended and what is required is a statement on the tongue as well as the heart. As well as the heart, and this has preceded, but it's a very important point for the brothers and sisters to understand and for a Muslim to be upon clarity with regards to his deen. That whenever one says uh, the shahada that one states that on his tongue, but he must believe it in his heart. Qawlu la ilaha illallah. The statement, the, high, the most virtuous branch of faith is the statement, la ilaha illallah. But we have seen that that statement will not benefit a person if he does not know what it means, and if he does, and even if he knows what it means, but he, he does not believe it. He does not believe it. He says it outwardly, but he disbelieves in it inwardly, it will not benefit him. So therefore, when the word al-qawl, or what the reference to a statement is being referred to with regards to the text, what is intended is the statement of the heart, excuse me, the statement of the tongue, as well as the heart, any the belief in the heart, the creed in the heart, that one says something on his tongue and he believes in his heart. At that time, it's beneficial. قُولُوا آمَنَّا بِاللَّهِ وَمَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْنَا وَمَا أُنزِلَ إِلَى إِبْرَاهِيمِ Say that we believe uh, that we believe in that which is revealed to us and that was re was revealed to uh, Ibrahim until the end of the ayat. So this must be said with the tongue and likewise it must be said with the heart, meaning it must, the creed, it must be in accordance with what the tongue is stating. قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدُ قُلْ يَا Say that with your tongue and believe that in your heart. Oh, you disbelievers, I, I do not worship what you worship. قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدٌ Say, and with your tongue say that, and believe it in your heart. He is Allah, the one and only. Allah, the one and only. Can you not see if somebody said that with their tongue, but he believes that there's another God along with Allah? 
Hayyadan billah. Will that statement benefit him? Is this what is intended by the Qul Hu Allahu Ahla? That's not what is. What is intended to say it with the tongue? Yes, to say it and to pronounce it, but to believe it in the heart as well. At that time, it's beneficial. So here, the statement of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. If you had the Hadith al Azim, Hadith al Shu'ab, Qaw fa Afdaluha, Aw fa Arfauha, Aw fa Aalaha, Yani Shu'ab. Qaw la ilaha illallah. The statement la ilaha illallah. So this is an evidence for the fact that Iman is 70 some odd branches and its highest branch is the statement with the tongue and the creed and the heart that there's nothing worthy of worship except for Allah. That there's nothing worthy of worship except for Allah. This is Iman. The statement and that creed in the heart. The statement and this aqidah and this belief in the heart. Nam wa adanaha imatatul ada. And the lowest branch of faith is to remove some harm, to remove some trash, to remove something that is harmful from the path, from the path of the believers, from the path of the people. There, there is something, some trash in the way, or there's something that somebody, it may harm them, those who come after the individual. As he's passing by, he finds the harm in the path, the other, the trash or the filth or something that is harmful for the passer, passerbys or for the people who are coming uh, down the street or down the path to remove that from the path to physically go and to remove that from the path the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said this is Iman rather this is the lowest level of Ad Iman the lowest branch of Ad Iman now to remove that harm from the path to see some trash for example somebody is coming to the masjid and there's trash in the parking lot this is other this is, this is something that's harmful for the people to see especially in the masjid or in the masjid parking lot so I believe from his iman and his faith, he'll pick that up and he'll move it and throw it in this proper place. He'll throw it in his proper place. Or even in the street or on the sidewalk in his neighborhood. And the likes like this, he will see trash. Or he will see something that's harmful for the people. And he will remove it. And he will remove it because of his faith. And knowing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he loves that. And from iman is to remove the harm from the path of the people. Especially from the path of the believers. Especially from the path of the believers. So this is something that is clearly an action that is done with the body parts. So this is a clear proof for what the ulama have mentioned. The ulama of hadith, the ulama of al sunnati wal jama'ah, that al-imanu qawlun wa amalun. It is statement and action. Statement and action. Because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, al-iman is 70 somewhat branches, and from the, the lowest of those branches is to remove the harm from the path. This is called iman. This is called Iman. This is a branch from Ad Iman. And then he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Walhayau Shu'batun min al Iman. And bashfulness, shyness, chastity is a branch from Ad Iman, from faith. It's a branch of faith. So this Haya is established in the heart. The Haya and the chastity, the bashfulness and the shyness of an individual, of a believer, it's in the heart. It's in the heart. And it's from the greatest. Uh, it's from the greatest uh, aspects of faith that a person is shy from Allah first and foremost. In Allah haqqu an yustahya minhu min nas That as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said that verily Allah has more right that one will be shy from him than the people. So a believer he will be shy to disobey Allah azawajal. And he will be shy that Allah will find him in a place that he has prohibited him. Or Allah, sh uh, the, excuse me, the, the believer is shy that Allah will hear him saying with his tongue that Allah provided for him something that's not permissible. And a believer is shy that Allah will find him uh, and see him listening with his ears that are a blessing from Allah Azza wa Jal to that which is impermissible. So this uh, bashfulness is and the shyness and is first and foremost with regards to Allah Azza wa Jal is, is definitely a branch of faith and it's in the heart. It's in the heart. Also being shy from uh, the foul actions and the foul conduct with the people and to be shy to go out through the lands in a manner that is not proper and to go out uh, of the house uh, in a manner that's not befitting. All of this is from shyness and from bashfulness and this is from an iman that a believer when he leaves his home he goes out prepared to deal with life and to meet the people. He does not go out of his house uh, in his pajamas for example or in his, in his night garments. This is not proper for a believer although it's permissible but this is an affair that a believer he'll be shy to go and face the people in this manner much less go to Salat al-Fajr in that manner rather he will have shyness 
to stand in front of Allah Azza wa Jal with his sleeping garments on. And he, rather, he will adorn himself before he stands in front of Allah Azza wa Jal. Now this is all from the bashfulness and from the hayat that's in the heart of a believer. So this narration here, this great narration, the narration of the branches of faith, clearly clarifies that at Iman it is a statement on the tongue as well as a belief in the heart. And also it is actions that are on the body parts. And the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he has considered all of this to be uh, from at Iman. He has considered all of this to be from Al-Iman, from at Iman. And all of them are branches and aspects of sincere uh, faith, Islamic faith. Naam. So we benefit from these four narrations that have come so far. And uh, the first one is the Hadith of Jibreel. The Hadith of Jibreel. And uh, with regards to the clarification of Al-Iman. These narrations, they have many benefits in them and many rulings derived from them. But what we were discussing here is the issue, Masalat Al-Iman. And the fact that Al-Iman is creed in the heart. And it is also actions of the heart. And it is also actions on the body parts. And it is also statements on the tongue. Statements on the tongue. All of this is from Iman. So we benefit so far from this hadith that at Iman it has a foundation. At Iman it has a foundation and a base that is in the heart of a believer. And that is with regards to the six pillars of faith. And there is no Iman except by way of these first and foremost. Establishing them. Establishing them. In the heart of a believer and from that faith their stems, the, 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 the tree of Iman. The tree of faith which also inclu is included in the Iman, the actions of the heart as well, like hope and fear and love and, and trust and reliance as well. This stems from the foundation of Iman in the heart of a believer. We have seen that in the narrations that have proceeded and likewise in the verses that have proceeded. Also, what we have benefited from these narrations as well is that actions, actions like salat and uh, of the body parts, actions like salat and paying the zakat, all of this is also from al-iman. And also making the, the excuse me, fasting in, in Ramadan and giving charity. All of this is from al-iman. This has proceeded. And also we have benefited from those texts that we have read today and in those previous classes that leaving off that which is impermissible also is from Al-Iman. Also is from Al-Iman. And uh, likewise, today we have seen the, this con, uh, concise and inclusive narration of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the most beneficial narration, that also the, the statements and uh, the actions and uh, the, the belief is clearly from at Iman, and that Iman is more than one branch, and its highest level is to state, to make this statement along with the certain belief that there is nothing worthy of worship except for Allah, and the lowest of those branches is to remove the harm from the path of the people, and also from the aspects or branches of faith is to have chastity and shyness in the heart of a believer, in the heart of a believer. So the Iman, it must be cultivated, and a believer, he must have concern for his Iman and he must take care of his Iman and we read the fifth narration with regards to the Safir and it is the famous hadith of uh, Sufyan Ibn Abdullah al-Thaqafi rahimahullah ta'ala and it is collected by uh, Tirmidhi and also by Ibn Majah and other than them rahimahumullah ta'ala that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said قُلْ آمَنْتُ بِاللَّهِ ثُمَّ اسْتَقِيمُ قُلْ آمَنْتُ بِاللَّهِ ثُمَّ اسْتَقِيمُ And Sufyan ibn Abdullah al-Thaqafi rahimahu Allah ta'ala He asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to inform him about an affair that he would not have to ask anyone else about, about it after and to clarify for him something clearly from the deen and uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he told him to say قُلْ from here now, what we have seen in the previous uh, lessons, we know what is intended by this. Qul amantu billah. Say, I believe in Allah. Is the intent of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, whenever he said here, Qul, which is a derivative of Qawl, it's the Amr, fil Amr from Al Qawl. Is what is intended for him to just say that on his tongue? Qul amantu billah. Is this what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has intended for him and, and, and required for him? And this is the advice that he has for him just, just to simply say it on his tongue? 
I believe in Allah. Or rather, is there another intent? Naam, that's right, there's another intent, and that is that what is intended from Qul, Amantu Bila, say, I believe in Allah, say it with your tongue and with your heart. Say it with your tongue in statement and believe it in your heart in creed. I believe in Allah. I believe in Allah. Say, I believe in Allah. Naam, but then the Prophet Sallallahu in this concise and comprehensive advice, he said, Thumma staqim. Thumma staqim. And then be upright. And then be steadfast upon obedience. And then be upright upon istiqamah. And that which that creed in your heart and that statement that you made on your tongue necessitates from being submissive and humble before Allah Azza wa Jal. And submitting to Him with tawheed and complying to His commandments in obedience and staying away from His prohibitions, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and worshiping Him along with no partners and fulfilling the rights of His tawheed, tabaraka wa ta'ala, and following His Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, precisely and with truth. Now, this is what that means. Say, I believe, and then be like this. And he would, because the one who believes along with that statement and that creed, if it's correct, it brings about istiqamah for him. Say, I believe in Allah and then be steadfast and upright upon piety and righteousness, upon tawheed wa sunnah, upon obedience to Allah and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's what that statement requires and likewise that's what that creed necessitates. Qul amantu billah. Say, I believe in Allah. Say, I believe in Allah. Naam. But then after that, what do you have to do? Thumma staqim. Then you have to be upright. Then you have to be steadfast. Then you have to be obedient to Allah. Then you have to learn His commandments and obligations and perform them with, and perform them with, uh, with sincerity and with humbleness and submission to His commandments. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you have to likewise follow his Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with regards to the manner of performing that and the manner of submission and the way to comply to those commandments. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he clarified that. So Qul Amantu Billah Thumma Istaqim. Thumma Istaqim. You have to pronounce that and say it with your tongue because Iman is a statement on the tongue. But likewise, you have to say it as well with your heart by believing that with certainty and having the firm creed that He is Allah and you believe in Him as your creator and sustainer and provider and that you will return to Him and He will hold you accountable. Say, I believe in Allah, the one who is worthy of worship and there is none worthy of worship besides Him alone with no partners, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and then be steadfast and upright. Because along with that statement, which is considered al-iman, Quran to billah, and that creed in the heart, which is also al-iman, likewise this necessitates al-istiqama ala al-ta'ati, wal khudu'i lillahi subhanahu wa taala bimtithal, bimtithal al-awamil wa tark al-nawahi. This necessitates for a believer likewise to comply to Allah, to submit and surrender to Him by complying to the commandments and performing them and staying away from their prohibitions and avoiding them. At this time, the person's faith is strong and the ad iman al-wajib is complete and now he can start competing with the righteous in the ranks of piety and taqwa and trying to draw nearness to Allah Azza wa Jal and competing in al iman al mustahab the affairs of al iman al mustahab Naam, yani the, not the affairs of iman that are not obligatory. Yani the affairs that are that draw near to Allah and the actions of obedience that are not obligatory. After establishing that which is required and an obligation with regards to the rights of al iman now a believer he competes with those who compete. And for this, in the high ranks in paradise and the pleasure of Allah Azza wa Jal and nearness to Him and to see Him, Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, let the believers compete. Those who are competing, let them compete in this. And race and compete with one another in the goodness and hasten and race to or compete to the forgiveness and the mercy of Allah Azza wa Jalla to His Jannah. But this is first after establishing that obligation. 
establishing the obligation of Ariman and then after that increasing in, in the actions of obedience and the actions of righteousness and piety and the actions of righteousness and piety so again we have seen that uh, Ad Iman is statement and action and creed statement of the heart uh, excuse me statement of the tongue as well as a statement of the heart when we say statement of the heart this means creed and belief and also it is actions of the body parts and uh, which is clear and also actions of the heart this is also considered Iman and, uh, and just as the body parts perform actions likewise the heart performs actions the actions of the heart is secondary, and yani coming from the, the 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 statement of the heart. Yani the statement of the heart is first. The creed in the heart is first. Ad imanu billahi wa malaikatihi wa kutubihi wa rasulihi wa yawm al-akhir wa wa al-iman bil qadri khairihi wa sharri dastaasl. After that, then the heart likewise has actions. Amal, amal al-qulub. من الرجاء والخوف والتوكل والثقة بالله والاعتماد عليه سبحانه وتعالى والاستعانة به تبارك وتعالى وإنابة إليه نعم to repent to him and to trust him and to rely upon him and to hope for him and his reward and for hope for his aid and his support and to fear him سبحانه وتعالى الخشاء all of these are affairs of the heart and actions of the heart that proceed from the foundation of Iman all of it is Iman and likewise, the actions on the actions on the body parts also is al iman. And likewise, the statements on the tongue also is al iman. To say la ilaha illallah is iman. Muhammadur Rasulullah is iman. Subhanallah, alhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar. This is all iman. Subhanallah, wa bihamdihi. Subhanallah, al azim. This is all iman. Statements of iman to call your brother to goodness and to teach the people the khair and to remind them of that which is obligatory upon them and to warn them from that which is haram. This is all from al iman. Dawa ilallah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala is from Ad Iman. To give a sincere advice is from Ad Iman. To direct your brother to that which is good for him in the deen and in the dunya. This is Ad Iman. This is from Iman. And this is something that is beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The state it is a statement on the tongue and the creed in the heart. And the actions on the body parts. This is the reality of Al Iman. This is the reality of Al Iman. So we have also benefited from this that Al Iman is not one level. And the ulama they have mentioned about what is considered as Al Iman Al Wajib wa Al Iman Al Mustahab. And then also they have other terminology like they will say Al Iman Al Mutlaq wa Mutlaq Al Iman. And these terms that the ulama they use to refer to Al Iman. And uh, at Iman al Wajib, this is uh, the Iman that is obligatory for a believer to perform. Naam, so there is the foundation of Al Iman, and that a person enters into Al Islam by way of, and then after that, that Iman it must be completed, and it's not complete, and he's not a true believer, or, or his Iman is not correct and proper and sound and complete until he fulfills the rights of al-iman so then from that stage of entering into the fold of al-islam and being a believer considered in general a believer and this is called mutlaku al-iman he has the foundation of or, or aslu al-iman the foundation of al-iman but after that a believer must strive to complete the iman and there are obligations that must be performed for that iman to be complete if he fulfills those obligations about Iman, he becomes a complete believer. And he becomes from those whom Allah has promised to enter paradise without any reckoning or without any punishment. The one who has fulfilled the rights of Ad Iman. The one who has fulfilled the rights of Ad Iman. And this is by performing that which is obligatory upon him and leaving off that which is impermissible. Entirely, all of the obligations here performs them to the best of his ability and that which is haram and impermissible, he leaves them off entirely. The one who lives upon this way and dies upon that way, then he has the promise of Allah Azza wa Jal, the promise to enter paradise and he will not be, uh, he will not be punished. You know, this person who lives upon piety and righteousness, upon obedience, and he fulfilled the obligations of Ariman in this manner. By complying to the commandments and staying away from the prohibitions, and he died in that state from the mercy of Allah Azza wa Jal, this one is promised with paradise, and 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 the fire will not touch him. 
They will not, they, they, the fire will not even touch, they will not even hear its breath. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. As for the believer who has Aslu Ad Iman, or he has Mutlaku Ad Iman, he has the foundation of Ad Iman, and he's a believer, but he did not fulfill the rights of Ad Iman, the obligatory rights, meaning his Iman is deficient. This person, the scholars, they call him uh, Al Mu'minu. Uh, he's a believer with deficient faith he's a believer with deficient faith yani because by not fulfilling the rights of ad iman this means that he has either left off an obligation that it's an incumbent for him to perform or he has performed a, a prohibition and perpetrated that which is impermissible and yani by falling into the, the major uh, the major sins and whether it's by leaving off that which is an obligation to perform or by falling into that which is haram and impermissible he has fallen into major sin this person his iman is deficient his iman is fallen and decreased accordingly so the believer excuse me so the ulama they call him a believer with his iman yani mu'minun bi imanihi fasiqun bi kabiratihi that he is a believer because of his iman but he's a fasiq because of his major sin. So then we see that this type of individual is gathered inside of him khayrun wa sharr. And this person, he has good and bad in him. Though then in the people from this aspect are three types. And there's people that have al khayr al-mahad. Nasallallahu azza wa jal min fadlihi. That they have nothing but good. They're all they're all good. They're, they're all good. Their hearts are good. And, they're, and, and, and because of that, their iman is strong. And, and, the, and their hearts are alive and they're obedient to Allah. And then there are those people who have nothing but evil. They have meaning they're not, they're not Muslims. They're, they're, they're evil. They have nothing good with them. Some people in this life, as Muslims, they're, mis they're confused with this affair. They see the disbelievers, they have this in this life, and, the, and they see that, and they think that they have, that they have nothing. If they die in that place, they will never have mercy from Allah. Rahman. The most gracious will not have mercy on him. The one who dies upon disbelief. So the one who is a disbeliever, he has shar, 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 mahf. It's pure evil. He does not have any faith or any goodness with him. Any goodness with him in his heart. And then there are people who have Iman with them. The foundation of Iman or the fundamentals of faith are with them. They're believers. But also along with that belief, they have mixed it with sharr. They have mixed it with evil. They have mixed it with disobedience. Lesser than shirk or lesser than, any than major shirk and lesser than major disbelief. And lesser than major thulm and oppression. So they're still believers, but they're mixed. They mix their faith with sin. They mix their faith with disobedience. They mix their faith with uh, obstinate rebellion against the commandments of Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So the scholars, they call this one Mu'minun bi imanihi, fasiqun bi kabiratihi. He's a believer because of his faith, but he's a fasiq, a corrupt, a wicked individual because of his, his, his sin. So this person is gathered in between, in between him, sharr wa evil, accordingly. Accordingly. So some, uh, and likewise, the threat for this person in the fire is accordingly. This person right here, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he mentioned in the hadith of Ubadi bin Samit, that he is tahta mashiyati. Them, and that whoever performed uh, or, or something from these sins and he died upon that, then he's under the will of Allah. تحت مشية الله إن شاء عذبه وإن شاء إن شاء غفر له أو عفى عنه. نعم كما جاء في الحديث that if Allah, the one who dies upon this major sin, if Allah wills, He will punish him, and if Allah wills, He will pardon him and forgive him. But in any case, the creed for the body of Ahlul Sunnah with regards to that person is that his, his abode will be the, the, the Jannah. Even if he's punished in the hellfire, the punishment of the believer, the one who has the asl of faith in his heart, then he will not uh, abide therein forever, nor will he be punished the punishment of the disbelievers, and nor will he enter the fire, the entrance of the disbelievers. They will, be, they will enter the fire in humiliation in a manner, and they, and they, will, never, and they will never exit. And a believer, he will not enter the, in that manner, but yet in Billah, from entering the fire. This is not to make the, the issue sound light, but rather it must be known, the difference between the way the, the people entered the hellfire. And the, also the difference between the way the people enter the Jannah. 
So some people entered the Jannah, as I have mentioned, first and foremost, with those who go in, with no punishment and no reckoning. And then from those people, there are those who have high, 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 higher ranks than others, and they have more honor with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there are those who uh, enter the Jannah after being purified in the fire. After being purified in the fire. There are those who are given a quick or swift reckoning. They're just, they're, they're, their reckoning is light. A light reckoning. And then after that, they enter the paradise. Others, they, then some will enter the hell fire first. And, and then after that, they will come into the, uh, the, they'll be allowed to enter the paradise. And even the Prophet ﷺ, he mentioned about the last one to enter the paradise. The last one to, to leave the hell fire and to enter the paradise. Allahu Akbar. All of this is clear, clearly clarifies that the people of Iman, there are different stages and different levels because the Iman in their heart and on their tongues and in their actions was different. Uh, different, different. And so therefore their reward is different. Their reward varies based upon the uh, variation or, the, or based upon how much the, the, the faith fluctuates. Whenever it's strong, the actions are beautiful and good and beneficial and so are the statements. And whenever it weakens, then likewise, accordingly, the statements become weaker and the actions likewise become weaker. But something that a believer should be aware of and know that with regards to the Iman, whenever it weakens, and we've been discussing this issue that, for example, if the person, he commits zina, billah, what happens to his faith? La yazni zani, hina yazni in the one who commits fornication, he's not a believer while he's committing fornication, meaning his Iman is decreasing, and also the one who is stealing, or the one who is lying, or, or the lies like this, while he's committing that sin, this is causing his Iman to decrease. But, a believer should not despair because if he felt remorse after that and he remembered Allah Azza wa Jal and he repented from that sin and he repented from that sin, the Iman will go back. The Iman will go back. And sometimes after a person falls into sin from the favor of Allah and a blessing upon him, he will give him success to repent and his Iman will become stronger than it was before. His Iman will come, become stronger than it was before because of the, 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 the sincerity of that person's repentance and his regret and his remorse and his disobedience. Then Allah favors that, that, that believer and He gives him success to be even stronger. To be even stronger. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from His mercy and to give us uh, hearts full of Iman. And, to, and you know we're... قلوبنا بنور الإيمان واليقين ويثبتنا جميعا على الحق والهدى حتى نلقاه سبحانه وتعالى إنه جوال كريم هذا وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم